Jack Show. What's in your cup? A whole lot of everything, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody all around the world. Welcome to the best thing that ever happened to your entire life. This is the Kickback Show, the kickbackshow.com. I go by the name of Files, and she is. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Tiana Giovanna, as always. And he is. DJ Swivel. Anything less would be unswivelized. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm extremely happy. Shout out to Simone, Priyo Voodoo, all up in this thing for uh, just connecting family back with family. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother E Mills. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If it's uh, if it's something that's outrageous or spectacular going on, chances are E Mills did it. You know what I'm saying? And we got my <laughs> brother right. Wally Green in the building, man. What's popping with you, family? Oh man, you know, uh, just enjoying life right now. Happy the world, trying to open back up, get back to normal. Uh, working on some new music. Uh, that's probably what I came from. I was too bottled up for a year and a half. <laughs> so I'm just back in the lab. Yeah, man. It's been it's been what? Probably about a decade. Yeah. Uh, that we've known each other. Yep. Yeah, yep. man. Yeah, and it's 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 wild. Like I know the feeling. I know that this last year has kind of been tricky for a lot of people. And and I know for you, mm-hmm. every time I've I've either seen you or come across you, you've been somewhere doing something, staying productive. You know what I'm saying? So yeah man it's it's good that it's good number one that we got some music you know what i'm saying but but what's the last year been like for you being being bottled up how have you managed uh not so well i i i don't i don't like the way uh the world <laughs> the universe i don't know what you want to call it uh felt so i was like you know the energy just felt off to me you know like everything just yeah. felt off so uh i definitely felt the transition of things i felt like going from okay, not that they were perfect, but at least from okay to worse. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. right now, uh, I just want everything to get back to normal. And hopefully, if we all lucky, things won't even get worse than where they already are already at. So let's all just pray and hope for the best that the next that this next year won't be full of no surprises. That part, man. Yeah. That part. I'm already knowing, man, because I mean, and, and you know what's wild is I feel like everybody is a little overzealous, kind of jumping back out there. I know everybody is excited, but it just seems as though that like everything just disappeared and everybody is back in the street. I hate traffic right now again yeah, yeah. in LA. Like it's it's all bad, uh, but it just seems as though that everybody is out. The wait lines is crazy at restaurants and clearly the even club. The, you know what? Even the drive just to eat, man. It's like I think I waited, it was like, and it was, this was like uh, 3 a.m. I'm coming from you know, the club at like 3 a.m. So I'm like, you know, I'll grab a little bite to eat. Yeah. So I said, I was in the line, man, for 45 minutes. Oh, no. You know, and that, it's, it's just crazy, man. Like, the drive through lines right now, they're longer than they used to be for some reason. The wait, I don't know. You know, but you know what I think it is? Like I, I think it's, I think it's, it's uh, the, the whole, the entire system is off balance. You know what I'm saying? People are not, Absolutely. companies are having a hard time finding people to work now because people been yep. off, getting benefits, getting loan, getting, you know, doing their thing. But it's like they haven't been really having to work. So now that everything is open back up, it's like, why well, am I going to go back to work when I can just chill and party and do my right. thing like I've been doing for the past year and a half? You know right. What I mean? So, yeah, man, it's I, I think it's I think it's tricky. You know what I'm saying? I think it's real yeah. tricky. I, I see hiring it. signs everywhere right now. Yeah. yeah. I just found it interesting how, like, you know, it seemed like it was the worst, worst thing ever. You know, obviously a lot of a lot of lives lost or whatever, but, you know, within the last month, month and a half or so, it seems like it's just gone, you know, it's been completely eradicated and just gone. You know, we got stadiums full of people watching these, you know, NBA playoff games. It's like, oh, there was there was never a pandemic. Like it, everything's like back to normal for, at least as far as the optics are concerned. But I mean. Listen, I'm staying you know, you know what it was for me too? Yeah. Right now, a lot of things are higher right now than they than they were too, like gas and houses and stuff like that. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. That- Inflation has hit us hard. Inflation hit us really hard, and there's not going to be any kind of respite from it anytime soon. Like it's it's not. I'm wondering when, yep. like the housing prices but- and things like that. Like when is that gonna come back under control? Because it's just, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like I say, the energy is off right now, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, maybe, it, it might be our new normal. Who knows? So, I know. Yeah, I, I feel as though that it's, it was a system put in place for this to happen, for the market to, you know, do what the market does. And for those that understand it, to benefit off of it. 
You know, yes. as 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 a creator, has it has it been difficult? Because I mean, the benefit with going through a pandemic and being shut down as somebody that's an artist, producer, or just a creator in 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 general, you have the power to still create. Uh, has it been a challenging for you to then transition back into this new norm that we're dealing with now? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, granted. There hasn't really been too many performances, or if there have, they've either been virtual or been modified with the presence of an audience. But how have you like had to adjust to, you know, creating in a sense? Create creative wise, um, I'm okay in that area. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just learning to try to uh, learn as I play. <laughs> if that makes sense, <laughs> you know, like because oh. this is my first pandemic. I never been in nothing like this. I don't yeah. you know, like yeah, no. So. I don't. Trying to like you know you know just stay uh, grounded and you know stay focused. There's so much stuff going on out here right now in the world, man. Between you know SBA loans, and PPP loans, and EDD, and you know stimulus. It's like it's just it's a, it's a crazy time right now, you know. So you know I, I know some people right now who you know they might not have been you know the the, uh, the most lucky with money or something like that, and all of a sudden a, a few you know all know scams, licks, and everything else. Next you know they they throw more money than me. Like, What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's wild. It's wild out here. So when when all it this is, stuff, you know, when all of this stuff first started shutting down and everyone was adjusting, how did you maintain like not only your sanity but your your level of creativity and inspiration? Because I know obviously towards the end of of the pandemic i mean it's not over obviously but but towards the end of the i should say lockdown it was easier because people were more used to it but you know it was a lot of people who were like i can't stay home like this i can't create like this yeah towards the very beginning well, how did you maintain you know what because everything to me is a song to be honest if you're an artist every everything you do everything you see uh, it's something that you can relate to and, and like put that into your music, you know? So if the time we went through, like we all went through this together. So with that being said, like if I do anything or say anything about this, you can relate to, to what I'm saying, you know? Right. Uh, I, one line, like one of my songs, I said something along the lines of, uh, it feels real good. Like I just got paid. Uh, I've been stuck in the house for like 400 days. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> when I say a bar like that, people, feel that way with me like yeah I know, I know yeah. what you mean you know like, like you know, we was all like stuck in the house together so everything is still like you know a song in itself so instead of just like being mad I just take it for what it's worth and it's like somebody telling you something like it, you, know, you don't have to listen to everything I say get whatever you want out of what I'm saying and keep whatever little small part that is with you take that with you you know what I mean and then the same thing with the music I take whatever uh, out of it I want to take out of the, uh, of, the, of the conditions rather that's going on in the world I'll take little pieces out and the rest of the BS, I just let it stay. So is that what? That's how I work. Is that what inspired you to do, like party music coming out of this, and like feel good music coming out of all of this? Yep. <laughs> Cause I was like, you know, I was going to no party, so I'm like, you know what? I'll just do a, a party type song. And then the video was like a house party type thing. I didn't like right. go like, it wasn't like I didn't rent a rent a warehouse and make it look clubbish. Like, no, nah, we're gonna do. No, it's a house party. A house party type thing because this is the type of stuff that we had to do low key. You know, like 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 I'm having a get together. Like man, come through. Like, I don't care. Like you know, like we you know we, the people try to break rules because they were trying to put like uh, what conditions on us. Like oh, we don't want more than twenty people at a gathering at a time. You know, right. like so I don't know. It's just crazy, but I still you know like like I say that the the being cooped up that inspired party party. I say I literally got bored. I was like, this is boring in the house, just doing nothing. So uh, it was room to. I like your uh, was, plus one, by the way, in the video. Your, your plus one is. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, I'm, I'm I'm a fun person, so you no, know, I was like, you know what? Let me have some fun. Um, we did the video. I, I wrote the song. I liked it. Uh, it. It was a it was a good song. It was friendly and it was fun. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a two street. Uh, I knew the lane it was in and everything, so I had fun doing it. I was trying to figure out who that little kid was that snuck in in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, you know, uh, you know, we cast uh, our company anyway. You know, meal ticket. That's where we uh, most of our shine comes from. Our, our casting side of things. Yep. So, mm. so it's easy for us to get. You know, pretty much what we want as far as casting goes. 
uh, we've been doing it. Uh, we we over ten years. We probably like twenty years plus into the casting. So we we do that. Uh, like I say, I had fun with it. Uh, the kid, he had a blast. Um, he was running around even after this uh, shoot was over. He was just that was his first time uh, being on camera. So he yeah, it was a whole lot of whole lot of. Uh... It was a bakery going on in there. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, 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 man. A lot yeah. of pies and cakes. A lot of, cake, yeah. a lot of cakes was going on in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> ain't know it's crazy. Uh, the kid, you know, it's crazy. You know what's crazy? When I sent that video to uh, to BT Jams, uh, they had me, like, you know, dumb it down a little bit. Wow. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, I, I didn't understand it because uh, they said, like, we didn't want no, um, no gun, no gun scenes in there, right? So I'm, I'm watching it when they premiered it, and, like, I forgot who video came on after. Maybe it was my like, Polar Ray or something like that. Or, but uh, they had guns immediately in their video. I'm like, well, I'm like, how come y'all tell me? Uh, you know, so it must be levels, man. It obviously, it must be levels. You know, right, I'm right. like, okay, they 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 showing they video like the video right after my. But then when I submitted my videos, like, let's take the guns out, blur them. You know, I get mine blurred. The A-list artist can show his guns, so that's right. where. <laughs> okay. yeah. You know how that go. Well, Jay Z did. Well, you right. ain't no Jay Z. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm wondering. Are often yeah. more dangerous than guns. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yep. It's been a whole lot of people been yeah. killed over some cakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. But here's the point. According to facts.com, cakes have saved more lives than they have taken. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll go with that too. Especially, especially the light, fluffy ones, right? The... Oh, yeah, yeah. The ones, the ones the that have the, the texture of two. Both ways. I mean, you know, yeah, you know. The <laughs> ones... Hey, hey. Like we 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 can get we can get real nasty. Just like all oh, that's missing is icing. Like okay, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like what are these dudes over there talking about? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you gotta sometimes you gotta when you beat the case. You know what I'm saying. Make sure that it's like <laughs> um, all right. You know what? I think it's I think it's only right since we talk about the cakes and all of that that we uh that we play this we play this. Thing. Speaking of cakes, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's only right that we get into this. Right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, my man Wallet Green is in the building. This is the Kickback Show. The Kickback yes, Show.com. Party, party, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're going to be right back with it. DJ Swivel is in the mix. Snitch. For new and exclusive music, we on live. listen to the Kickback Show. Yo. The Kickback Show. What's in your cup? A whole lot of everything. Kickbackshow.com. Wallet Green is in the building. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if with some of these videos, I mean, granted, we know that there's there's politics that exist in everything, right? Yeah. yeah. When it comes to editing or censoring language or behaviors or images, I'm wondering if it has anything to do with the context of it all. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, in radio, you can say you can say the word ass, but you can't call somebody an ass. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't call somebody an asshole, right? Like, you can say the word bitch, but you can't say somebody is a bitch, you know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering if- Like direct, okay, I feel you. Right, you know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with it. I mean, granted, with when you talking about, you know, the fireworks, like, I don't know if there's any appropriate context to having a gun, you know what I'm saying? Because even like, prime example, years ago mm -hmm. with uh, the Pimple Butterfly, Kendrick, you know, he had the officer at the end use his fingers as the gun, you know what I mean? Yeah. And or even in one of his other videos, it was like the, the bullet kind of came out, but you never saw it going into anybody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering if if that has anything to do with it versus it just being like, hey, we just we just showing our, you know, we we exercising our second right amendment, you know what I mean? I, our right to bear arms. I think um because even when I submitted my video, I think for say cheese. Say Cheese mm -hmm. said the same thing. They had the guidelines too and said, uh, we can't have no guns in any of our clips. And Say Cheese said it was because of, I guess, Instagram. So uh, okay. I guess Instagram wouldn't allow me to show uh, a gun or a pistol in my clip. That makes sense. That makes so, a lot of, okay. And that, by, that them, by them being a company or a network that, uh, you know, on Instagram, they gotta, they gotta follow Instagram guidelines. And, and that makes sense uh, to my understanding when it comes to like broadcasting in either even in other countries like you can't say certain words you can't even it don't care about like 
the, the, the context or anything like that. So that makes a lot of sense, especially with, you know, going overseas, going into Europe yeah. or some of the third world countries that have limited access or whatnot. What it did, like you what never, it did for me personally would make me wonder if I should even put anything like that in a, in a second video. Because off top, I felt like I was, uh, you know, minimizing myself with the first one because like, even on my say cheese clip, basically I could play the video up until right before the pistol would get shown. And like, okay, if it gets shown right there, then cut off before that part comes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't even get a chance to even give you guys a lot of my verse because oh. we didn't get to that part because we got to clip it before yeah. the, uh, right. but see now I, know, but now I know for future videos and projects I do, hey, like if you plan on putting this on Instagram or, or marketing on there or doing some other stuff, you might want to, you know, use a finger or do some other gesture or just keep yeah. the pistols out of your videos. Yeah. You know? I think one thing that we don't understand too is is how, well, I, I know that we as Americans, especially Black Americans, understand our influence on the world, but I think far too often we don't truly understand how influential it is in other parts of the world, especially yeah. when you're dealing with whether it be revolutions or revolts or whatever the case may be, something as simple as us expressing ourselves freely with our lifestyle saying, this is where we come from, this is what I'm doing, and I'm exercising this right that I have to be able to do whatever. Over there, they deal with other types of, you know, other types of issues that maybe their government doesn't want their people to be exposed to because they still live in it. Yeah whether it be communism or whatever the case may be. It's like, nah, we don't, we trying to suppress that kind of behavior because we don't want any type of uprising. I think we, I think, that, I think you know we don't mean? even have to go nowhere else. I think we're going through the same thing right here where we at. Uh, yeah. Gun, we're yeah. Controlling and everything. Like, like we're going through the same thing right now. So, you know, if you want my opinion? I think eventually they will take him away. That's, I just, this is a matter of time. I think <laughs> on that old show, Demolition Man, if there was no guns in the future, you only could see a gun in the museum. I think it, it, it will eventually get to that point. I, I feel as though that it'll be it'll be based on different markets, though. You know what I mean? Like those that they want to have guns, they allow them to have it. Either that or to be like what marijuana used to be, where you gonna have to have it tucked on the low. You know what I'm saying? If you get caught with it, you know what I'm saying? And then granted, you're gonna have to pay that time. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think something you know, like that. They, something that's small. If you if you look, if they said, okay, if you get caught with a gun, you're doing 25 years uh, minimum, no uh, no early parole, nothing. A lot of people would even, would you really, would you take a chance of getting caught and get with a gun, being a black man, you know how often we get put over? If they said, if you get caught with it, it's 25, 25 years, no explanation. I'm not even taking I know I wouldn't. Now. <laughs> <I'm not taking laughs> I'm like, no, I ain't about to do uh, You know? I'll be out there. I'll be out there fighting with these finger guns, hitting everything. Pew, pew. Yeah. You got to fall, bro. I hit you. I hit uh -huh. you. <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> some fencing ass <laughs> Negroes. <laughs> put, we'll put these back here in yeah. the uh, in the trunk. We'll I'll, just I'll look for. Chances. I'll look for the nearest you know broomstick, bottle, whatever. Like if you know before I you know roll the dice on something like that, because no. Nah, <laughs> It's the idea that we have right now talking with each other. So imagine if they put that into play, all our opinions right now, all four of us say like, no, we would, I wouldn't take a chance of doing 25 years of just getting caught with one, so I just wouldn't carry one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if, if they implement something like that, a lot of people I'm sure would feel the same way. It's like, I'm just not gonna carry. I feel like, the, unfortunately the law though, on <clears throat> guns in general is not so cut and dry here in America because you know, you've got the federal laws, but then you also have like states' rights, yeah. right? And I feel like, you know, you've got those states like Texas, Indiana, you know, all of those parts that are not ever, like they are going to fight 100% tooth and nail to, like, I, I honestly feel like if there was anything that could potentially start another, like a civil war, it would be if they were like, guns are done in this country. Yeah, because there's just there's just too many non-melanated people that will freaking like will really go try toe to, to toe. wipe the planet, you know, clean of anybody who's like, nah, we we don't need guns anymore. Like, but I do need the Supreme Court to step in and like reinterpret what the Second Amendment actually means. Because I mean, I think the verbiage in the Second Amendment is very very clear about you know to. <clears throat> Um, cause it says to maintain a well-armed militia, 
you have the right to bear arms. Like it yeah. specifically says that, I think in like the second sentence of the second amendment. And the, the way, in my opinion, I'm not a lawyer, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in my opinion, but I play one on the show. <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like the Supreme Court has just interpreted that entirely too broadly. Like, and not only that, you have to take into consideration the time, like people were carrying muskets. Yeah. When that, like, it took you five minutes to load a second hand <laughs> bullet. Just, yeah, I mean, right. no one was popping off. Like, there was no semi automatic, <clears throat> and no, definitely no automatic anything. It was, yeah, you, you packing powder and pouring, and <clears throat> you know, like, I think it's, it's, the, all of those things need to be taken into consideration. And people today, you know, they just interpret it the way that they want to interpret it. And they're like, all they see is you have the right to bear arms. And they don't see any of the other words. The family members who actually lost to gun violence are going to be strongly opinionated of them taking it away. Mm -hmm. Those would be the people that say, no, we should take all the guns. Maybe yeah. they lost a child to a drive by or lost a child to a random shooting. Mm -hmm. Those type of people will definitely fight to say, yeah, take, take the guns out of you know, citizens' hands, period. And that's a good point. I think even on the flip side, those that have been burglarized. I mean, and we again, we're not mentioning Texas, Florida, the ones that we know the law was written for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, X them out. But like the ones that are like, nah, I've had my house broken into, or I've been robbed, or whatever the case may be. I want to have protection. I feel as though that they're gonna be the ones against it to say, no, I need this to protect myself. You know, that, and that's but, saying yeah. um, you definitely talk, like to have it and not need it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. then, then have, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like yeah. And I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for like people, you know, having, you know, that, that sense of protection or whatever the case may be. For sure. But, you know, the, in my opinion, like the biggest problem is just these automatic, semi-automatic and, and freaking, you know, assault rifles, these freaking weapons of war. Like, you know, obviously the, the bulk of these like, um, tragedies where there's like you know lots of lots of lives or lives lost is because of these you know these assault weapons and like you know yeah. if we could just find a way to you know drastically reduce and or completely you know re, um yeah. eliminate these assault weapons i feel yeah, like that, that, that black market better. that black market is always it's gotten out of hand yeah, that yeah, black yeah. market is always yeah it's, and, but honestly, no, uh, there's so many laws. Kind of like, uh, oh no, go ahead. I apologize. No, nah, go ahead. I'm listening. I was just saying that there are. So I learn more. Many, I learn more listening. And <laughs> <laughs> there, there are so many laws on the books that they just don't even enforce now. Like they need to enforce at the very minimum what they have already like what's already out there. But I mean, they don't even study gun violence because the NRA stepped in and said that you can't do that. They lobbied Congress to make it so that congress at large or the federal government at large could not study gun violence like it's ridiculous and so if you can't study it then you can't make educated guesses or educated decisions on how to curb it and how to fix it and i'm saying this you know i am a gun owner i have owned guns for i don't know what 15 years now maybe maybe a little bit less but it just it and and as someone who is a responsible gun owner like it's it's just way too easy to get your hands on one mm -hmm. like it's way yeah. too easy to get a license there's no background checks and this is in california like and it's one of the, california is one of the hardest places to, to get one, to get one. <laughs> yeah. and i mean hell don't try to get a cc uh, a concealed carry permit yeah please <laughs> but i think i think what we what we don't understand, like, I, I agree. I feel as though that it, the easy solution is to regulate it like we do with the DMV, right? It's like, yeah. have people register, do their, those background checks and just make sure that, you know, you stay up with it, whether it's, you know, checking in every seven years to renew your license, whatever the case may be, or take do wellness back. checks and take all of that, you know what I mean? Of, of safety, safety checks and all of that. Like that, I think that's the easy solution, but I feel as though that the mass consumption of people, right? The mainstream don't understand what Wallet just said, that black market, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's big business when it comes to, you know, getting black men in prison, 
You know what I'm saying? I feel like there's so much money in the streets when it comes to yeah. exchanging it, as well as internationally. Like, clearly they show it in movies, but I don't think we really understand what that black market is like with a lot of this, you know, a lot of things, whether it's guns, drugs, sex, all of that. There's so much that we don't know. I got a lot of friends, man, who went down, um, you know, they back home, they did a little two-year round, whatever, but a lot of friends, man, they, they get caught with the with, with their pistol. And it's like, what do you go down for? Like, all he got put over and got caught with his gun. No crime committed, but just the fact that he already was selling and he got caught with it, yeah. you know, they got to do like years and come back. But, I mean, that, that happens all the time, all day. You know? And that's just money in somebody's pocket. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that we're going to look, look at, you know. Mainstream would just say, oh, he got a gun. He, You know, they'll paint this picture with, uh, oh, you probably had the intent or you could have did whoopty whoopty whoop. But at the end of the day, it's like it's like schools. You get butts and seats. That means more funding for you. You know what I'm saying? So you get bodies inside of some of these prisons. You know what I mean? Well, that's why Black racial, is, that's why racial profiling exists, even though they say they don't they don't do it. But that's exactly why they they do do it, because they they catch guys like that slipping, so to speak. Like I just pulled them over for whatever bogus excuse they come up with and like just so yeah. happens that you know and what fine they fine right you know it, it don't have to even be a it could be you know two ounces of weed whatever we find we find we put you exactly. over don't matter like, so. yeah, like and if they don't find nothing you know some of them are out there freaking planting stuff so you know is or or in but my case like making an excuse like i had a <laughs> a bottle that was clearly labeled like um a vitamin supplement and they you know Pop me for freaking, you know, thinking it was, uh, you know, drug paraphernalia. Like, come on, man. Like, it says, like, nature's bounty on the freaking <laughs> label. Like, <laughs> vitamin C, yeah. like, really? <laughs> but because of the, you know, the skin tone, this it's pretty exactly. different. Desperate. I can only imagine what that conversation is if you go to county. Hey, man, what you in for? Oh, man, I got caught with, you know. A, a pack of some some Flintstone vitamins in my car. No, you know Nate Valley's best. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, man. I got caught with a probiotic bottle, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they, they gonna open a capsule. Look, they gonna open a capsule and see a lot in there and say, "You must be selling these." <laughs> <laughs> There's more than three, more than three in here. You must be selling them. Yeah, man. That's, that's this what you mean you sell a man's vitamins? What you talking about? Like, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. You know, but I mean, I th you know what's wild too is, is I know uh, a while back, like they, they started, they started this thing to where kind of going back to the music videos and images, they started utilizing not just just music videos, but also lyrics against some of these artists, you know what okay. I'm saying, to develop yeah. cases. You know what I mean? I don't know if it was if it was a law or anything, but I know that it became admissible in court to where if you say something in your raps, they basically taking that and using it against you to say. I, I, I hate that though. As an artist, yeah. as an artist myself, I always, you know, um, felt strongly about don't a song is a song. Yeah. I it's just, it's yeah. Just whatever your imagination is, etc. People, you can't. I, I'm one of those type of people. I I can listen to a song. I like the song. I don't have to go kill nobody after I hear it. You know what I mean? I like but everybody's <laughs> different. But for me, I give artists that create space. It's like, you know what? It's a song. I, I I don't look at it as nothing more. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. I don't really dig too much deeper into it. Yeah. And it's it's wild that they that they I mean clearly it's an attack on black art because they don't do that with, with music. I mean with movies. You know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah. they yeah. ever say, oh, he's you know, we gotta we gotta censor some of these movies because somebody was inspired to go shoot this up or go do this, or this kid became a bully because he was trying to be like like Thanos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, so it's well, it's clearly attack on us. Yeah, but and what's interesting is you know, country music is more violent than than friggin' hip hop music, but they you know, they don't use uh country music artists lyrics against them in the court of law, you know what I'm saying? Or if like <laughs> You know, if and let's, flashing a rifle on this video or something. We're not doing everything that we say we do in our music anyway. Let's be yeah. honest. If we did, bro, we all be in jail or dead. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> right? You know, we just, it's just nothing more than a lyric because as a songwriter, I can write whatever I want to that, that um, I can make it appeal to the masses. You know, understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I might put certain lyrics in there that uh, know will, you know, uh, capture a bigger audience. 
But in the whole time, I'm not doing exactly what I'm saying in those lyrics. I just wrote the lyrics because I know this will sell, you know, for the masses. So if I say I do a line as long as a ruler, it's like, damn, no, you, you sniffing lines as long as a ruler? Like, right. no, but it was a cool bar. You know I was saying? Like, like, so you can't listen to everything that people just give you in lyrics. That's why I say I hate when people do that. But then also, it's too, like, hip hop, hip hop was founded upon, I mean, I love the beauty and, and language with hip hop. You know what I mean? To, to take something and spin it and, and to make it metaphorical, you know, yeah. use idiom, different thing, you know what I mean? Like similes and all of that. Like there's, there's so there's so much depth within hip hop that it isn't necessarily, you say something like that, it's like, you could be talking about anything technically. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, I'm using these words and using these metaphors to illustrate yeah. a picture. You know what I'm saying? That, that can be applied towards anything, you know what I mean? Not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. Run DMC said it, you know what I mean? Like we taking language and spinning it. And even if it is related to whether it be drugs, violence, You're whatever right. the case may be, it's like this this is my this is my my life. This is what I grew up in. This is what I saw growing up. You know what I mean? So I mean who's who's yeah, to man, say who's to say well, I'm I'm one. out of here, brother? Who's to say well it's not talking about a, a a line of chopped spinach? I mean, you never know. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, right, man. you know, hey. like I say, they shouldn't. They should. Um, they shouldn't believe everything they hear. A song. Let's give a song the credit of being a song, and not saying, "Well, he said that in his song, and he must be doing it." Like, no, he's not doing that just because he rapped in his song. The right. so he, he wrote a song. The song did what it numbers. That's it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You know, it's like you said, it's, it's metaphorical. So if he say, you know, he gonna. I might, I'm gonna pop a hundred people today. Is he really gonna pop a hundred people today? No, no but like, he, he just sent it as a bar, you know? I think, I think but, it goes back to that influence. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> it goes back to who's actually getting this music to make it problematic. It ain't problematic when it's with us. You know what I'm saying? Like if your music stay regional, it's just in your neighborhood and everybody going up, it's like, okay, we don't care. But the moment that it starts to travel again into other demographics, other markets, and then again, we go back to the conversation earlier, when you start getting your music around the world, which this is the day and age that we live in now to where, you know, you could put out, you know, Party Party can be seen everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally 7 billion people have the potential of coming across this music, you know? And if you're in a certain area to where they may be a little bit more sensitive to drug abuse or violence or whatever the case may be, I feel as though that's when it becomes, you know, we start having these conversations of like, oh, you can't say that, or you shouldn't talk about this, or yeah. we don't want that over here because it's going to influence, you know, us. I think this, it's this uh, individuality of the listener. I think the person, if you're ignorant and you're listening to it, then we that's you. You know what I mean? Like, like, but me and you can listen to a song and like the song and not want to go kill nobody and right. not want to go shoot nobody. But individually, that's who we are. You know what I mean? Like, right. now, if a person is already ignorant, and then he listened to a song and he wants to say, no, that got me ready to go do something. And that's how that person is. That's that's that person. That's his character. Yeah. You know, he need to work on that. Not my lyrics. <laughs> you know, like, like, like he need to work on himself. Right. Because all three of us, anything that's violent and not want to kill anybody. Which is so crazy because going back to the conversation we just had, that same logic is crazy how they, they can apply that logic to hip hop music. Right. But don't apply that to, to guns. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And say, yo, like this, there's a kid, this white boy that just killed, you know, nine people in the church. Why are you not trying to regulate or put stipulations on how he can access firearms and doing that? You know what I mean? The same thing. So and not only not only what, yeah, man. what yeah. he can what he can access in terms of firearms, but like, you know, was this kid being influenced or or whatever you want to call it by, you know, playing a, you know, um GTA or freaking Call of Duty or something like that and just was like you know what like, I, I now it, like it's I'm not getting enough from from the video game and and the it's not real enough for me now I need to go out into the world and make it real for me and see what that actually feels or or politics what's happening in the news you know what I'm saying if yeah. you illustrate this picture that oh, black people are coming over or you got, you know, people of color that's coming to take your job or they're instant threat, you know what I mean? Or if you got fam, whoever that's 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 saying this this narrative, that's gonna encourage somebody to say, you know what, they're a threat, I need to eliminate this threat. 
you know what I'm saying, or neutralize whoever, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, that shit is tricky. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's crazy how, again, it's a constant attack on black art, but then the ones that's actually doing the damage to incite an insurrection or riot or somebody to get pop, it's like there's no consequences for that behavior or that language or they art or mm -hmm. they expression of freedom of speech. You know what I mean? Like shit wild. This shit is wild. But at the end of the day, while the yep. grain is in the we building, talk about, you know we, what got, I'm we, got, we got real political on today. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's, it's really not, but I mean, but you know, I mean, we it's it's always natural conversation, and it's I feel as though everything happens for a reason. I, I feel as though that there's there's beauty in yeah. in what we do. You know what I mean? Even in, in a song like Party Party, and you know, I mean, it it the video kind of you know stimulated this conversation yeah. essentially. You right. know what I mean? When it comes to trying to censor how we talk, when at the end of the day, it's like, this is just a, this is a black artist, this is a hip hop artist that's just trying to have a good time and just speaking from his experience, speaking about what we go through and just wanting to have a good time, but still yet, you know, yet still we get marginalized, okay. we get censored. I'll, I'll ask you guys a real question here. Yeah, um, yeah. Since we, um, if we went off how other races view black people, right? And do both you guys think that they uh, view us to a certain degree of ignorance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's what's given to them. Yeah, that's, you know, and, um, that's what I feel like yeah. it's been, been portrayed since, since day one, really. Like, even, you know, going all the way back to um, the whole, like, blackface situation. Like, they were acting, you know, it's white guys in blackface, but acting ignorant foolish dumb unintelligent like all of that you know what i'm saying like so it's been oh did we we've been portrayed did we reach that point is it really portrayed or did we really reach that point as a as a people i think it's both i think it's been portrayed so much that we yeah. have we have a certain number of of black people or, or people in our community that perpetuate that cycle yeah. so for example boys in the hood comes out right we relate to it Right, mm -hmm. and it's it's painting a beautiful picture of what we deal with. And it's an incredible message that's behind it, right? But then you have people that come from our sections that glorify that. Mm -hmm. They get caught up and say, "Yeah, this is us," versus saying, "Yeah, we trying to get out of this. This is telling a good story of how we're being, you know, marginalized. How the system is against us. How we dealing with X, Y, and Z. How we killing our own. Let's grow and, and get above that." But instead of saying, you know what, here's the positive message behind that, let's grow and elevate. I think some of us took that and glorified it to say, yeah, don't come out here because this is what we about. And so those that are not from our section, are not from LA and don't are not aware of what's happening and how we get to the, the point that we get to, they look at it and say, oh, they violent. Don't go to these certain parts of the world because, or these parts of LA because they this. Don't go to Chicago because you're going to get shot, you're going to get killed. It's like, you go to Chicago, that's not necessarily the case. Like, yes, there are some real, you know, some real situations that are happening out there that need to get resolved. But right. it's like, are we having that conversation? Is that being publicized? Are we talking about the, the individuals that are doing work to try to help, you know, with gang intervention, to try to help reestablish, you know, our communities, to try to, you know, invest in our communities? Are we highlighting that? Are we highlighting the artists that are not talking about these perpetuated cycles? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I think it's again. I think it's a double-edged sword to where these these other communities, people that are not black, are getting a very one-dimensional uh, perspective and perception yeah. of of our communities and what we do, and then they take that as true. Swivel said it like you look at movies. If all the movies that are getting put out and, and promoted the most are showing black people as subservient or as slaves or as mammies or you know what I mean, like these, nothing against him, but Tyler Perry. Like if that's the only productions as being showcased, that's what the rest of the world is going to see us at. But if you're not seeing the other shit that's shown us in a different light is showing the diversity and showing the other aspects of our community and the artwork and, you know, the the, the creativity, the influence and all of that, then we not only doing a, a disservice to ourselves, but the potential of what we could be for the future generations. Yeah, honestly, uh, like this is like off the regular where all three of us is talking like I, I would like to see us at a place where we wouldn't be viewed as as that ignorant crowd you know what i'm saying like 
where it's like other, every other race gets together and have fun except us. You know what I mean? Like, that, that would be like a cool one. Like, you know, just step outside that whole judgment. You know, like, I, I think um, I think we are are trending in that at direction because of you know things like Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may be. Like you know, there's a lot more um, people pushing like positive black images and, and that kind of thing. But it's it's we just it's we're so far behind on on publicizing all, all the positive stuff that comes out of our our culture and our community that we're like, we got a long road ahead to catch up and to, before we kind of even out with the, all the negative stereotypes and negative publicity, and then eventually like overtake that. But I feel like it's, you know, we're trending in that, in that direction, but it's, you know, it's just a, a very steep uphill battle and we're, you know, we're just now playing catch up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. There's so many different systems that's against us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you look at programming, the music, the music that gets publicized, like there is no balance. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, we often refer to the nineties to where you had a million artists that were out and you got everything across the spectrum. You got the gangster music from Snoop, but then you also had Tribe Called Quest in that same year. You had Wu-Tang Clan, but you also had, you know what I mean, Nas. Yeah. You feel me? So it was it was definitely a balance uh all across that's the board. My, that's my favorite era. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I look at TV programming, you know what I mean? Like we had we had um we had party, you know, we had like party shows like living single, but then you also had family shows like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know what I'm saying? So again, it, I think the balance is offset because it's like where are those shows now that were entertaining but also spoke to us and uplifted us. Yeah, you know, yeah. like the Martins, like Family Matters, like yeah, Cosby yeah. Show. You know what I mean? Like now all we got is reality shows where they they just party like it's all drama filled, which again, I feel as though it goes back to balance. There's a place for it, but that's it. You know what I mean? Like I don't watch TV, but everything I hear is, oh, you know, this person is in a relationship. They fighting so and so and this and this. And it's it's right. just drama filled. Who's going who's going to argue? Who's going to get, uh, you know, in a fight? Who's going to do? It's like listen, we gotta eliminate. Where's the balance they again? Feeding you know the, uh, they're feeding that ignorance so that we have accumulated, and they're feeding it because oh, yeah. if it's not filled with ignorance, then we think it's boring and they don't want to watch it and they take it off the air. Like no way, enough drama. If there's not enough drama in this show, we gotta pull it because the audience, which is us, made them. They like they, they say no. We would love that kept the show on. It was positive, but you guys as an audience didn't want. It. Yeah, you know what I mean. The numbers don't lie. We try to yeah. give y'all something, y'all won't even watch it. The moment we get out from the ignorant, the ratings go through the roof. And But I also feel like that has a lot to do with the quality of work. Like, and this is a good conversation. Like, it's easy yeah. to say that, oh, you know, there's there's trash or, or, you know, nobody listens to, you know, positive, uplifting, you know, music, hip hop. But it's like, yeah, well, I mean, it also has to have quality. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I think it, it goes both ways. I think the quality that's out there doesn't get enough push. But yeah. then also, you know, you have movies that are being written that's just like, yeah, this is this is corny. You know what I mean? But it's possible. Like you had Black Panther that did numbers because it was cinematic. It was it was beautiful yeah. to look at. The writing was incredible. Like it wasn't corny. You didn't have, you know what I mean? Like you didn't feed into any of the stereotypes. Like you had an antagonist that actually brought up some some very valid points. You know what I mean? When, when it comes to addressing issues within our community. So you know, I feel as though that it, it it definitely has to it has to have quality just as much as anything else. Yeah. Well, and and quickly going back to Faz's point, like the the different systems that are in place, like it it's also um, it's also a challenge or an uphill battle when you know the systems in place will will put more money behind promoting the ignorant stuff and. You know don't even bother with trying to promote something that you know is positive like i'll, I'll kind of like it too um you know when empire was on its the tv show empire was at, like in its heyday um shows like that love and hip-hop or whatever like you know, getting publicity like crazy publicity but blackish was you know was coming on the scene as well but like it took a while before blackish really kind of caught the attention of of the masses because it just wasn't really being yeah 
you know so and and yeah. that, that's been my argument like when it comes to music is i feel like just you know a lot of these labels and radio stations will only just push the ignorant stuff just to kind of um cater to the stereotypes and not you know you know not push the 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 stuff with substance yeah and i, I don't really know you know how all that stuff works behind the scenes because uh you know we as an audience i don't like i said it's kind of like the uh the ratings thing i don't know if we got to the point as a culture where we're actually putting it on ourselves because like well i try to play, play positive things but you guys didn't want that <laughs> you know what i mean like so have we got so big with the masses of being ignorant with our own self that we like it's, it's, you know like we're like it's too late bro like they they don't want the positive shit in their community no more like all they glorify and all they want is to is the ignorant shit so that's what we got to give them and that's what they're giving us as, as as writers like yeah i put this out but at the same time one of your own wrote this this is one of your own and this yeah. and, and you as a community want this song yeah you know like so if gucci man say yeah i wrote that in the studio it's ignorant as hell and you guys <laughs> love it they, they're gonna back, they're, they're gonna be like we had nothing to do with this yeah you know what i mean this is this is like your own soul y'all feeding and y'all love it yeah <laughs> you know like <laughs> in my in my personal experience like in in working in commercial radio like or when i first started like as a as an intern like you know i kind of saw firsthand like the the amount of um influence certain radio stations have and um i remember asking you know questions to like some people in high positions like yo like why are we playing stuff like you know like a, a laffy taffy for example like why are we playing this music it's just it's garbage in a sense you know what i'm saying but you have you know artists like common and and nas and whoever else like you know dropping songs with like with actual substance and these radio stations could play those songs or those artists, but chose not to. And and it's just, you know, but they have the power to influence what the audience actually likes, but they they choose not yeah. to. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. what that's what I, you know, in working in that situation, that's what I started to realize quickly. And I was like, yo, like I, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like we could we could easily influence the audience to appreciate better quality oh. music, but they just choose not. Yeah. That's funny you said that, because if you put like 10 uh, positive songs on the radio, even if I didn't like like them at first, you guys just kept rotating them. By yeah. the end of that uh, first quarter, I'm going to find at least three of those 10 songs that I do like. Yeah. Now, because that's what I'm, that's the only thing I have to choose from. You know, so like, you know what, that, that's my song. That's, that's, that's hot, you know, like, so if they, they put it out. Yeah, then once you like the three out of those 10, then when, when more artists put out other songs that are like that, then you start liking those songs as well. And it just, it grows. But yeah, again, <laughs> and they know they can do that. They know they have that power, but they, again, they just choose not to. And, you know, I don't know yeah. if, it's, if it's money that's behind I like it or whatever, but these systems just, you know. I like the hip hop music though. Like when you guys mentioned stuff like Tribe Called Quest or Common, you know, um, I think um, Kanye West was one of the best at combining both worlds. Yeah. Not the Kanye that we now, but the first Kanye when he first did College Dropout. Yes. That CD was a breath of fresh air. Kind of was, you know, accustomed to. Yeah. So. But we I, don't have I also think it, it, it was the timing in which he came in as well. Because when he dropped, College Dropout came in the middle of Atlanta's dominance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When Lil John was literally running everything. It was all about <laughs> the strip club music, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and down south and the snap, you know, music, all of that. And then here comes Kanye with backpacks and polos talking about insecurities. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even go to the grocery store without some ones that's clean. Like, it's like, yeah. oh, you, you talking to, you talking a language that clearly is going to influence those that was just snapping and wearing big ass long white tees you know what i'm saying so you know and we was also coming off of 50 you know what i'm saying like he's coming off of 50 cent and so i feel as though that it is very cyclical but it's also up to 
like you mentioned, a consumer to not say, yo, there's nothing good that's out there. It's like, no, there's stuff out there. You just have to find it. You have to make an effort to go search and look for it. And then again, it becomes this cycle to where it's like, okay, then it's up to the powers that be to make it yeah. accessible. They will which, a lot of marketing you know, dollars. You know, how, you know how artists get mad and they say, well, I want to change my label and everything because they're not putting much into me or they're not taking care of me where they should. Like, right. They're not putting no marketing dollars in They might choose to do that, like you said, with certain type of music. Like, no, we're not going to put a lot of, you know, a lot of capital in your area. We'll give you some, you know, just your budget, your budget, you know, 200K. You, you, you don't get the, uh, you know, the, the Five million right. budget to, to do marketing. Yeah, until until they until they show that they work it. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm happy that some of these artists were able to kind of break break the mold. You know, the J. Coles of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like respect to what Drake has done, but it's it's amazing to see what Kendrick and TDE has, has done. To see what Tyler the Creator has done. You know what I mean? To see what right. um what's my guy? Uh, Child is Gambino. You know what I mean? Like to see what he's done, not just musically, but just all around with, with his art. Same thing for Tyler, to be able to dominate so many other aspects of art, music, creating, clothing. You know what I mean? Since TV, you brought up Tyler, like, what's your opinions on how you think they try to push homosexuality on the black man? I think with, that's with the system. And everything, like, like, it didn't used to be like that. And no. now, you know, like it's different. I feel like I feel like it's a system in play. And I mean, granted, I know that that's that's a conversation that's that's sensitive for most because I mean, like at the end of the day, love who you love, whatever the case may be. But I feel as though that there's this mega push to try to push out uh, a heterosexual man. I feel like there could be a balance. Like if you go and promote, if you are part of that LGBTQ uh, community and that's what you want, cool. But to bash heterosexual men or to say that masculinity is toxic, I think that's problematic. You know what I mean? Because there are black men out there that like us, you know what I mean? I know I can speak for my man Swivel when I say, yo, we chivalrous, we love black women. Like we ain't on, you know, that label of demeaning or misogyny, like we're not a part of that. But then we get thrown into this, this pocket of being labeled as toxic simply for just being us. Like I'm not bashing whatever you believe in or who you love or none of that kind of, but then I'm still being labeled as toxic because of whatever reason. So you, think, you know what I mean? Is there an agenda you think to uh, to push homosexuality outside the uh, the yeah. community? Because right now it's like you can't even write like a hit show without. Oh no, we, we need some of this in here though. We need a splash of this. Yeah. Right? It ain't, mm -hmm. like, Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, you know I, what I mean? It, yeah, I think there's, I think there's just always been a, an agenda to destroy or any other you know word you want to use to it you know destroy degrade eliminate the black man and the black woman because at the end of the day <laughs> you know just like power structure yeah there's there's a there's a lot of you know there's a lot of haters out there that don't want to see us win and, and that's why a lot of these systems that we've talked about like are in place so that it's that much harder for us to be successful and and whatnot. But yeah, like to answer your question, yes, I've you know I strongly feel there's there's an agenda and there's a reason why like we're seeing um, a heavier push, you know, as far as um, I think as far as that's the way they do it now. When they see like uh, when the kids, you know, um, when they're in their uh, their sponge state, you know, they're very influential. When they watch, uh, you know, homosexuality on television, I think you're kind of like telling them at, at four and five years, like, no, this is already okay. like you said, like this is already okay. Which is, I mean, like you say, you can pick and choose and be who you want to be with, but you didn't really give them a chance to decide. You just kind of like show them that it's okay at five years old and four years old. Like, no, no, this is it's okay. But yeah, when we were growing up, it wasn't mm -hmm. like that on television. You know and I mean? it's like, wild because I know that it existed. Like there was homosexuality that existed, but it, it wasn't so overt and like pushed in your face and say, become this. Right. But do you really you know think that, that it's that way now? It's, yeah. saying it's pushed in their face and saying they become this? There, they're, I think uh, they're driving or they're trying to, I feel like they're trying to make it way more accept, acceptable and like kind of sway it to be more prevalent and say like like yeah maybe you should go this way and when but a person's that's not like, how that works though 
Like you can't. Like, I think they tell. It's one of those things where it's like people, like people may decide to experiment, but I don't think you decide to be gay any more than you decide to be straight. Like it's not so much a conscious decision. It's more of a like it, you're hardwired like that. Like yeah, I've known people who have experimented and stuff, but at the end of the day, that's not who they were. And then like so What's, they ended up. Like, in, 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 in the male community, I think I, I'm not trying to be funny, but like, like if you experiment, <laughs> like if you a guy, like it's like no, you're gay. You're gay. You know well, I know, like, and, so and, but, did, and, but I think that's a problem. You say you think it's a problem? I think that's a problem. So like, because you're pigeonholing people into something. That's like saying, oh, I tried weed once. Okay, so you tried weed once. You're a drug addict. Point blank. Period. That's like, you know, like just because someone decides to experiment with and they're secure enough in who they are as a man or as a woman and they decide, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe I am attracted to this person. Let me kind of see what this is about. Like, how do you know that it's, it's, this, it, it makes them wrong. like, that makes them who they are. That's like saying, okay, I try, if, if that's the, if that's the mentality of, oh, you tried this once. So you are automatically gay. Then, okay. I tried, I tried tennis once. That doesn't make me a tennis player. I, you exactly. know, I that's weed why I'm once laughing. or right. twice, but in that, that make in me those, areas, in those areas you're good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But for some reason, like in a sexual area, it's like it doesn't. You don't get. You don't get the same type of. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, look over that. You know, like as far as like you know what we won't mind the fact. You know, like if X, if you know, if, if such and such did a, a sexual act to him one time, we're just gonna overlook it because. He found out he didn't like it. Like we don't, we don't look at that like that. You know, like we just no. like you did that act. Like yeah, okay. But, but yeah, you gay. Well, anyway, well, I, I'm not like, disagreeing. And like I I'm agree thinking the black what's community. I don't know. You know, but I just feel like they should give the kids a chance. I think when I was growing up, it was like I knew it was wrong, and I don't know. Maybe maybe TV influenced us to know it was wrong because they grew up. We grew up like saying no, seeing boy and girl together. You know what I mean? Like I say, this generation is different. So I think if a child watches it, and if every show that comes on TV or you know whatever he's watching and he's seeing it, basically, you're saying like, you know, if you if you like Tommy and he's your best friend at you know six, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like like they, they it's it's a different push right now. I guess in 2021, yeah, it was. I guess what I'm, back. what I'm saying is like I you know I see a lot of commercials where it's um where they have you know two two black guys kissing or whatever i don't see it with white guys you know what i'm saying like i and and i'm i'm seeing more and more of the the publicized of um blacks and homosexuality than other ethnicities and to make it more um popular common whatever you want to call it for one specific ethnicity i find that interesting because again like because there is there is the power of of influence and if your goal if your goal for some you know uh a systemic situation is to have you know less black people <laughs> procreating then you know in all areas they're gonna they're gonna hit it from all angles so but to your point just from a purely like an advertising standpoint, right? We watch nothing but digital television, right? All of the stuff that we watch is like Netflix, Apple TV, YouTube. Um, we have, well, we have Spectrum, but um, I mean, we don't always watch that often, but here's the thing. Same, so, same here, I don't watch too much a lot yeah, either. So. But from, from a purely advertising because I'm in the advertising industry. From a purely advertising standpoint, the way that it works is you as a black man and me as a black woman living in a black household watching what we watch, they understand that that's who we are. Like that's the data that we get. That's our algorithm. So right. we're going to see automatically more black targeted advertising and that's going to consist of more black people in that uh, advertising. 
I I understand that completely. But at the same time, if I'm watching regular television, it's usually a sporting event. That's a very generalized demographic. It's not a specific black demographic. One and two, like I'm talking like in you know we see these freaking um, these medication commercials like one of every like five or six commercials now is is a some new prescription drug and on, for whatever reason on those commercials which are being targeted to a mass audience not a black demographic i'm seeing you know black gay couples and so i just find it interesting that i don't see it with other ethnicities in like commercials and i, I get what you're saying <clears throat> from the targeting advertising standpoint, but that's what i'm but, saying like digitally like when it comes down to digital television we can say we want people who meet this criteria who are watching this game to get this information like it can be that i segmented. understand but my again my point is i'm giving you examples i think they're like if, if, if the all the races are fine, then why did you guys select a black couple to do this <laughs> yeah and and again yeah. to your point in the commercials that i that i made uh, that i brought up as an example i'm not a target audience member of that prescription drug company like because i do not have none of those ailments that any of those commercials talk about so they're not targeting me but those that's what i see and it's and and, and i agree mm -hmm. i understand what you're saying and I think where it becomes problematic to swivel's point is with i the limited times that i do see broadcast television you'll see a, a gay male couple black right and then when you see a commercial with a black woman, there's never a father around. Yeah. She's always like a single mother, right? Or she's in a in a biracial relationship. You know what I mean? Like it's a white with a white man or something else. Again, cool. But then it's like you mean to tell me that y'all can y'all can put a black family together just like you did with some of these other ethnicities yeah. and other cultures. You know, other cultures. You know what I mean? And programming clearly to Tiana's point everything is algorithm based programming is solely off of exactly what it is it's targeting a specific demographic or market in order to get them to buy into your product and putting it after whatever if it's a sports show drama whatever the case may be i think when it comes to this narrative that we're talking about and an agenda being put in place yes whatever happens within each individual's household is what they are it's what it is you know what i mean i grew up with both of my parents and then they separated right watch cartoons where you had a male, you know, Bugs Bunny kissing, you know, other men, you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, okay, cool. But again, it was also like a balance, also saw heterosexual. It was, it seemed like it was much more of a balanced playing field, right? To Tiana's statement earlier, like, yeah, if, you, if you're curious and you try cocaine once, it doesn't necessarily make you a crackhead, it makes you curious. But also there isn't, an influx of movies and television shows where out of nowhere somebody does a line of cocaine out of context with the show you know what i'm saying i feel as though that there has been an influx of tv shows to where there's just been this inserted presence that is just out of nowhere it's just yeah. like okay well now all of a sudden this character is black and he's homosexual but that doesn't exist with other programming it doesn't exist in other shows like, all right like with jamal on empire right i was like well we, let's make one of the main characters yeah. and, let's make, and it's like okay like okay if, if that's what it is that's cool but it's like okay is there more to it like and, and again I going think, back to the balance to where I, I haven't watched empire but you have this character that does this but then the parents are at odds with one another so what is what is that message that you're projecting to say the heterosexual black male and female can't coincide and get together and there's this drama and tension whereas on the flip side of things you have another agenda or another narrative to where everything is peachy keen over here with this character my my question is okay if that's what it is what what message are you sending to a child that may be watching this or somebody like what are you saying to somebody that is from another cultural background what is that saying to them and that's exactly why what you just described is exactly why i stopped watching empire when i realized what was happening like when i realized like what they were promoting i was like oh you know what i i can't do this anymore like i can't i can't and i i was really into the show and i was like one of those things was like dang i 
but I, you know, it's me as a person, like I can't support this anymore. I can't, I just can't keep doing it. Who? I'm never into it because I mean, y'all know how I feel about it, but my, my statement is always going to be, let, let there be balance. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're going to write a, a character in that is homosexual, cool. But if you're going to also have a, a strong black couple that, that don't have this going on, yeah. You know what I mean? Have that tension and that drama, like have it be balanced all across the board. And have a brother, black couple that does have that tension and balance for the entertainment. And his brother, yeah. you know, dating a white girl, like, and and eventually marrying a white girl. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was nothing that was supporting like a strong black family unit other than the fact that they just made good music and did good business. You know what? I didn't, I didn't recognize you said that right now. You're right. The, the, the brother was having sex with a white girl. <laughs> It's all messed up. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and it goes, it goes, I think that, that these types of that, that type of programming sends another another message to those that are not aware of our culture, right? As well as us. Again, it's it's this perpetuated cycle, right? To where then it's like, what are you saying about the black woman? What are you saying about a black man? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the message that you're sending across about that power structure? You know what I mean? Again, not to degrade or take anything away from anybody else's identity, what they, you know, what their sexual preference or sexual identity is. Cool. Allow them to have a space as well. I ain't got nothing against it, right? But what I believe in and what I identify as, I'm not seeing this being strong yeah. all across any kind of board, a Tyler Perry movie, whatever the case may be. Right. It's like, where is that? Why it can't we do that? Shows like a blackish. Well, we mentioned that. Then, yeah, okay. we, we mentioned, mentioned that. that. Yeah, okay. we mentioned that. Yeah, that, I mean, and they just goes, have these kind of conversations. Yeah, it just yeah. It, that was our earlier point that Foz was touching on, just the balance. Like, and there's just so many shows that are not like blackish that are that get way more shine, and it's just it's just there's no balance there. But I think that there, I think that's true across the board, though, right? Like all these no. crazy reality TV shows. And like, my point is drama in entertainment is where people want to be. Like people for some reason are attracted to the crazy, the dysfunctional, the drama, the- See, I was talking to you guys earlier though. I said, are we to a point as a culture where we became the problem? You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna give you guys what you want to eat. This is what you chose to eat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I gave you guys a choice. Yeah. You guys didn't want it as a coach. You guys said the ignorant stuff is how I prefer to eat my soul. I don't think that's the case. All we did I, was provide it. We want to make numbers. But going back to your point earlier about this whole, like, is there an agenda? And, and in that respect, I do believe there is an agenda because you know, and I'm sure, I don't know if you, you all touched on it early before I pop back on. I had to put the baby to sleep. But, um, you know, back when we were younger, we had wholesome yeah, black yeah. family that. television. Yeah. So I don't think that that's necessarily, we're giving you what you want to eat. Because to the point of the shows, like you said, like Blackish, huge success, great numbers. I think that if they, put it on TV, like the, I think that that is one of those situations of if you build it, they will come, right? But I think that they are choosing to yeah. not build it because they believe that, you know, black folks are a monolith and this is all that we want to consume is the drama and the and the ridiculous. But I, I mean, I think that <clears throat> television in general has kind of gone down that road, but I definitely see it more so with, you know, black-leaning programming. To kind of jump back to, to the conversation we were just having, um, I don't believe that white programming should be the standard for black creation, but just for the sake of my point, um, the TV show, which I've only seen a couple episodes by accident, Modern Family, right? Did a great job at balance, right? With having a homosexual couple along with a strong heterosexual couple mm -hmm. and everything in between and was able to address all of these was entertaining had you know very funny key points and address social and political issues all of that right but again there was this balance whereas again with black programming there's an unbalance 
you know what I'm saying? And so it's 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 definitely a multi-layered conversation again when we talk about what what the demand is versus what the supply is, mm. right? We talked about this on the show with with like, you know, when when Quentin Tarantino made something like a Django and everybody was up in arms because it was like, oh, here's this white man writing something and directing something where they use, you know, they say niggas so many times. It's like my my argument to it was, well, why didn't why didn't uh, Spike Lee have a joint? Why didn't he do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why didn't one of our black creators create it so he that we can eliminate that? You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, he had the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's, I mean, again, it's, it's so many different layers and there's probably a lot of politics behind it that we don't understand, you know? And this, I mean, we no, can go down a rabbit hole. Definitely know it's politics behind it. Look how long it takes us to get like Oscars. Like you trying to tell me nobody black can act? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. they, that part. you know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be like- Unless they play a particular role. Because it wasn't until Holly got knocked down by Billy Bob Thornton right. to where that was yeah. the most spectacular. And that's, you know what I'm saying? That scene was a little extreme too. Like it wasn't like it wasn't even like a regular right. scene. That came out of nowhere. And uh, I mean, <laughs> who, who was it? Uh, Jadakiss said, why, "Why did Denzel have to be crooked before he took it?" Like, we got to, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the powers they that they that they have. And they use against like against us, low key, because like. It's like, well, as long as you guys are operating under this system I built, this is how it's going to be. Yep. You know, like, same thing with the education system or, the, you know, the judicial system, man, or, or, the, or the, you know, it's like, well, you know, he got money, you know, he can get off, uh, you black, and you have no money, so you, I'm going to give you 20 years, and he'll get, like, no <laughs> probation. Shoot, even black, and you do have money. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> money don't make no. us no less black. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, man, your money's no good here. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just, you know. But all that go back to, like I tell people, let's just go back to race. Uh, them pretty much controlling everything. Like this system that we living in right now was already here before when we got here. You understand what I'm saying? Like it was like, it, it, yeah. us four didn't, it's like, no, it was like this when I was born. Like when I came, it was already like this, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. I mean, shit, they had put some things in place even more so by the time we got here. You know what yeah. I mean? Only, you know, I was born in 84, so 20 years prior, that was, you know, that was the feminist movement, in, you know, infiltrating our black women. It was the welfare system, you know, coming in. There was a bunch of other little things, you know what I mean? Martin Luther King had just got killed 20 years yeah. before, you know, like. And that's why it's, yeah. it's, um, uh... You know, it's systemic racism mm -hmm. or, or you know, prejudice, whatever you want, like all the above. Like yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, a it's a system. Like it's not just. <laughs> that was designed that way purposefully. Exactly. Though. Like, let's not yeah. forget. It's just some, it, it's not something that just happened. Like it was built this way. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't evolve this way. It was deliberately structured yeah. this way. Yeah. And, and we, we, we're we at where we're at right now because it wasn't that long ago. When you think of the 50s, like, that wasn't even that long ago. Mm -mm. You know, like... Look at our oh. parents' lifetimes. But that, Real <laughs> talk. And and it, this is what kills me, and I didn't I didn't even pick up on it until somebody pointed it out, like, uh, at least I saw on Instagram a while back, but, like, why do they always show pictures of, like, you know, Martin Luther King in black I and white? that out. Well, you pointed out, but I saw somewhere <laughs> else as well. But, but it's a great, it's a great point. Like it wasn't that long ago. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all of us here. Like our parents were living through that situation. Like, yeah. you know. But they show black and white photographs as if it happened 150 years ago. Yeah. Color yeah. photography was <laughs> very, very much in circulation <laughs> and very available to reporters and anyone taking photos. Like regular people had color foot, like yeah. had access to color cameras during the civil rights movement. But everything so is it was cool. HD. It was HD cameras. <laughs> they just put a they put an Instagram filter on it. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> that's all that was. Yeah. No. Yeah, y'all show is little. Y'all show was a little, a little different today than my average. Uh, <laughs> hey man, listen, we 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 got a tagline here. We also call ourselves Kickback University. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. I was literally just thinking that it's, it's shows like this that 
constantly remind me of why we do what it is that we do. You know what I'm saying? Because this is when, when Swivel and I conceptualized this show, it was to not only give our friends and loved ones in the LA scene an opportunity to be seen and heard, but also to be different from what we were accustomed to working in terrestrial radio. You know what I mean? Like you'd be able to go online and just you go on your Instagram and see what you into, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, how can we give your listeners as well as our, our fan base and our audience an opportunity to give more insight about who you are? So then it adds context to you as an artist more so than your music. Because we've had artists on here that, you know, they they music is, look, I'm I'm in, I'm a D-boy, I'm in a trap, I'm doing whoop whoop right. and the music, it may be misogynistic, but they come on the show and they like, look, like we need to, we need to fix this, the justice system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we need, there needs to be reform. You know what I'm saying? Prime example is is uh, nonsense. 80s baby, don't be Foster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Foster came on the show and I've known him. His, I encourage him to start rapping, rapping. You know what I'm saying? I know his lifestyle. I know where he came from, but I also know his mentality and him coming on the show is a complete polar opposite from the music that he may make. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you were able to get an insight for him it's all about it. Like he, you talk to Foster, the homie, you know, Foster, he a revolutionary. Right. You know what I'm saying? You would think he's more of a, he's more of a Malcolm X than he is a Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, and that's no disrespect, but it's like, he's more about revolutionizing his community and coming from content and all of that. So part of this show is, is to say, look, here's this artist, here's this creator that creates, subscribe to their music, but here they are as a person. Here's what their viewpoints are. Here's how they think. Here's how they feel. And this is why you should subscribe more so than just enjoying what kind of music that they make. Got you. And you, you yeah, flipped, man. Uh, so, you flipped the script on us and and act, asked us to like a, a super deep <laughs> rabbit hole of a question. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Which is yeah. beautiful. I mean, and, exactly. and, I, and and to be honest with you, again, I I don't want to I don't want to speak for Swivel, but when we created this show, I had no idea that it would become what it is now, to where we're having an opportunity to have these kind of conversations right. because it's necessary. Like we kind of breaking the mold from exactly what we're talking about with programming. It'd be easy for us to just come on here and promote and just talk about all the bullshit that people could talk. We could be talking about BT Award Weekend. Oh, who you think gonna win? Y'all, y'all can deal with that That's somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> There's other platforms for that, but let's, yeah, y'all go watch that. You know what I mean? But to be able to have a platform to where we're talking about real ass issues and what, you know, maybe what's on our mind, you know what I mean? Like we're dealing with real life. We've been quarantined for the past year and a half. Right. Let's talk about how we getting through that. Let's talk about some of these issues that are plaguing us. You know what I'm saying? So I, I greatly appreciate you brother for not only being who you are, you know what I'm saying, as, as a loved one, but for being vulnerable enough to express yourself and come on and, you know, and, and talk about it. You, you know, know as, a, as a writer, one of my, my buddies, they ask me all the time, like, hey, how can you make other type of songs, you know, uh, you know, something more, you know, uh, conscious rap. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, uh, to get a, anybody who's listening right now um, to go to our conversation, I write music that I can, that I can relate to or that from where I come from. You know what I mean? Uh, so if I do make, you know, certain songs about hustling or whatever, it's because that's what actually really like formed me and molded me to who I am as an artist. Mm -hmm. So I don't glorify, you know, like the shit that, that we that we do or how we live in or how we making it, et cetera. I like the whole story behind it of why I do it. It's like, because like, I want to let people know, like, nah, even though you might see me right here, this is where I came from. Though. This is where I started at. When they said, okay, on March, you said go. This is where I started from. Right. You know what I mean? I was right here. So not here, certain type of things that are that's influential to me. You know, like if somebody listen to one of my raps, not necessarily party party, but later on they hear more music. It's like, okay, if he is rapping about this or you know, coming from this and that, like, yeah, I choose that over the conscious rap because the conscious rap, I can't relate to it as much as I can for the glory of people who made it out the struggle, you know, the same way I did. Right. You know, like I come from uh, I come from a line of um, you know just hustling period you know like even outside of just trapping like you know we, like, you got to get it how you live so when i hear certain songs that influence even that song that influenced me like like okay i know i know i know that language i know what you're talking about bro you know what i'm saying and, and people 
who would listen to my music and what Wild Green represent. Yeah, I might have intelligence. I mean, they might not get that as much from me. You know what I mean? But I choose. Just only, only speaking for myself now, though. Right. I choose to make music. Um, you know, for people that also have my same story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, of course, the white kid who went to Harvard and graduated who was born rich, he might not listen to Wallet. That ain't that ain't where you come from, bro. You know what I mean? Like, but for people who say, nah, man, I was just like you, couldn't figure it out and had to make something out of nothing, mm -hmm. then they'll listen to it. If I, I, if I can correct you, I think what you do can be considered conscious. You know what I mean? I think far too often we mislabel you know, oh, he got any rap, or he, he this, and, or this is real hip hop, or this is real rap. When at the end of the day, the subject matter and what you're talking about and how you putting words together is conscious to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They not, you may not necessarily use the same vocabulary as somebody else that's using, you know, sesquipedalian type words. You feel me? <laughs> um, but you, <laughs> but you, but you're you're conscious to those that understand it, like you just mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Because you're Giving them, you're giving them an outlook. You know what I'm saying? You're helping them to say, look, this is where I come from. We all know that we don't want it. This ain't the destination. We trying to get up out of this. This is how I did it. Here's the hope. You know what I mean? I'm a living example that you can't come from where I come from and you're able to kind of get on this other side. This is the steps on how to do it. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. And, and, and honestly, to Faz's point, and I think what really ends up being kind of the theme of this show is balance, right? Like you have a good balance. You obviously have depth to your character. You obviously have a lot of thoughts about all of the things that we've talked about today and more on a deeper level. But just because you may not necessarily rap about that stuff does not mean that you are any less deep a thinker or any exactly. deep a character. So I think, again, you know, you can't, like we're bogged down by the day-to-day -day struggle or, you know, what happens in our society day-to-day. -day. You don't have to bring that necessarily into the booth with you, right? There's, a again, a balance. Like you can be deep, but enjoy a good party. And I think that's what yeah. it comes down to. And I try to give my fans like a chance, like everybody not over here with me. I might have a fan, you know, it could be in Philly or in New York or, or wherever. So it's like, I don't know him personally. So the, the closest he can get to understanding me and know me is my music. Right. You know what I mean? So, For sure. Like, well, what does he listen to? He, uh, if he says something about, about bad bitches, he says something about some weed. Well, I know he's, he likes weed. He likes pretty women. Or what, what, what else he say? He says something about, something about some car. Okay. So it, it starts, he eventually starts paying you a picture. Like, well, what type of person is he? What is, you know what I mean? Like, so my music helps you understand who I am without without personally knowing. So. Right. And and I think also too, it, it helps to kind of, I mean, granted it's all subjective, but I know that there were certain songs that I probably shouldn't have been listening to in high school, middle school mm -hmm. and all of that, but it helped to mold me into who I was. So the conversations that I wasn't having with my parents, like I was getting that from Sugar Free and DJ Quick, you know what I'm saying? And they kind of helped to guide me to say, look, this is this is how you move, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I mean and, and it's all subjective, like it isn't it isn't for everybody, you know what I'm saying? But it was it wasn't like it wasn't like like sugar free coming from Pomona. It's like, okay, this is the hometown champion, right? It wasn't like he was in his music saying, oh, you gotta become a pimp. He was like, This is my lifestyle, right. this is what I'm doing, here's the rules of the game. Yeah. And taking that and applying it to coming around, it's like, okay, like now, nah, you know, my dad didn't teach me how to deal with heartbreak. But Sugar Free said, look, bro, this is how you, this is how you do it. This is how you finesse it. This is how you get around it. So I feel the same way with, you know, the music that artists make. You never know what kind of impact in a positive way, how you're grooming and, and shaping and molding the next generation of those that are listening to you, you know what I mean? Whether they are a kid from Harvard or if it is, you know, somebody coming out yeah. from up, you know? So I gotta say, like, even with Sugar Free, man, like, it helped me understand him too. Like, I, I don't know Sugar Free personally. I met him like twice, but, um, like, I understand who he might be. You know what I'm saying? Like, through his music, you know? Like, like I had to read him, I, I would kind of assume that he kind of like blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Because of, yeah, right. I had listened to so many times, you know? Yeah.
Yeah, hold on, y'all. Give me like two seconds really quick. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in the Kickback Show, the kickbackshow.com, Kickback Show University, all up in this month. Um, I stay woke. And you're welcome. <laughs> I stay woke. Yeah, man. This has uh, definitely been an incredible show. Um, I think it's only right that maybe we uh, let's play a little bit of music and uh, come right back to it. You understand me? Wally Green is in the building. This is the Kickback Show, the kickbackshow.com. BJ Swivel in the mix. Snitch. Don't miss a beat. Kick that beat. Follow us on social media at The Kickback Show. Kickback on everything. Yo. The Kickback Show. What's in your cup? That's what it's going to be. So gotcha. that's why it's not like a typical, because you can go anywhere and get a typical interview. Yeah. You can't, yeah. you can't ever come over to my place. <laughs> <I'm Yeah. just> <laughs> <laughs> no. And oh, God. Oh God, you're not gonna have as much fun. The vibe ain't gonna be like this for no other show you go on. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> we've had we've had testimonies of people being like, "Man, y'all show different from the rest of them." No, y'all I just cool. told y'all that. You know, I told you like, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna interview. They're gonna yeah. ask you like, what inspired you to do music. You know, like the typical interview right, question. Right. What you yeah. what it is. Expect some of the projects you got coming out. Da, 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 you know, except the, go ahead and tell them what they do and what you got going. I came on here like. They done got the political side out of me and everything. <laughs> it's necessary, man. And I mean, we still do that same thing because at the end of the day, it's, it's about the music. But I feel as though, like I mentioned, like if if somebody, if one of your listeners or whoever is listening, they never heard of Wallet, right? And they tap into this interview and then they hear this, it's going to make them want to hear the music even more because it's like, now I'm attached to the artist more than I am just the music. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's, it's then that responsibility on the artist to then now I got to cater to this this fan because they only want to hear me make ass, ass music. You know what I mean? The laffy taffy type shit versus, look, I can make whatever I want. And now they attach to me as a person mm -hmm. and as an artist more so than just what it is that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Or the type of music I make because they may not be able to relate to everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I may make a D-Boy record. They're not going to relate to that because they don't live this lifestyle. But if I make another type of record it's like they yeah so yeah man I'm, I'm glad to have you here bro you know what though and right now today's music man it's really big on um on just finding your audience because it's so much the music game is so saturated today yeah. that we had listen remember before the radio and, and television for, forced us what to listen to kind of you know what i mean like, like hey i have nowhere else to go listen to no music you know like but now it's like everybody got these playlists and the way everything works right now today they don't have to listen to you bro if they don't like you Right, exactly. You know, I'm like, you, you have a, and now, now it's at your fingertip, like, I'm gonna make whatever I want to listen to right now. You know, this this, this is what we rock it to right now. Before yeah. it wasn't like, and to take it even a step deeper, right? Where you break up from the programming of like what radio was, you know, shout out to the kickback show, the kickback show.com. While the green is in the building, when we <laughs> talk about programming, um, you know, before it was, it, you know, terrestrial radio is here, are these five songs that we're gonna play every 45 minutes, right? That's just gonna rotate. Now, with the way that digital radio and, and programming works, you can select an artist and then they'll give you artists that are related to whatever that artist is. So if I put Wallet into my playlist, mm -hmm. you are gonna now be into this algorithm with other artists that are related to it. And then if I go listen to this playlist, it's like, oh, if you like artists like this, then you'll yeah. also like, well, and you know what I'm saying? And so now it's like, I can put in whatever I like and build a, a playlist, but it's also gonna give me other artists that I may have never heard of before that's all around the world. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, you know, I'm more cultured than if I was just listening to, you know, something I mean, else. I so. know, like, we used to come home, I just want to like watch, uh, you know, Rap City and Freestyle Friday, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah. like I would get, like whatever one of those and Park says like right at the hot top, I'm like, you know, I want to see the video. <laughs> like it was, it was different. Like, you know, like, like now it's like, everyone can do a video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like Back in the old day, like like you know, like you had to wasn't nobody shooting music videos, bro, except like people who had like a budget or some, you know, like something like that. You wasn't just like shooting a music video. And now you fast for it and now it's at the fingertips. You know, anybody can have a cannon or something like that or whatever camera they shoot. We're gonna shoot a video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like we're gonna load it up oh. and uh, yeah, do the dude, put some promo behind it. It's, it's different now. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just telling him like earlier, I was, you know, I'm ready like to 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 figure the new wave out. I'm constantly learning. Like, okay, well, how's this music thing changing? Or like, where is it? What direction is it headed? Or how's it? You know, how's it working? So, 
that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to figure out the, uh, you know, all this algorithm stuff and everything. And see, like, like, how is right. this new wave, like, moving? And it's, I mean, and this is definitely a beautiful thing, especially the way that, that you're tapped in and the lifestyle that you live because it's all organic. It's authentic, you know what I'm saying? Which it can be rare in this industry that we, you know, that we work and we live in and consume because you have so many other characters that come in that get built, you know what I mean? And they don't really be about those lifestyles. But like you mentioned, it's like, look, I'm able to, I'm surrounded by this lifestyle. Now all I got to do is just find a camera to just document it to then edit it together and put it out into the world. You know what I'm saying? And so when we get something like Party Party, it's a beautiful situation because it's like, you know, I don't need to have a million dollar budget, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't need to rely on a label to give me X amount of dollars in order to put towards creating yeah. this image, you know what I'm saying? When really it's just like, no, this is just, I just woke up and this is it. Yeah, we just, this is just, this is the video footage from my ring, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I just turned it on. Yeah, it's like, say, you know what, I'm bored. I think I should a video. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> do that now. Yeah. And it, it was funny too, because people, some people looked at the video and said, wow, this is a good video. Hey, hey you did this because you was bored? I'm like, yeah, I was yeah. bored. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I was in that house, I was bored. Yeah. I, I wanted to go outside. I said, I'm gonna shoot a video tomorrow, man. Like, so. You know, not, I think that the, uh, another silver lining with being quarantined and being in a pandemic is that you get, you get, uh, uh, an influx of, of creativity, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you get this to where it's just like, look, this is this is what I'm inspired to create because of my current circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, like I said, we had the whole little house party type vibe, or you know, coming into the front door and everything, and like, yeah. it, was, it was it was fun, man. I I had fun doing it. Uh, I actually had wrote that treatment myself, so I didn't. I, nobody wrote no treatment. For me. I do a lot of my stuff like myself. I love writing. I don't know. People probably don't know that about me, but I like writing just in general. You know, I'm like a content creator. Uh, my team, Miltik, we've got a show we're working on right now. So hopefully uh, you guys get that in the near future. Like I say, uh, I'm trying to stay busy the, uh, the most I can because and gain as much knowledge as I can and then like make ways for people around me, uh, younger cats coming up. Anybody who like was influenced by me or my partner, E Mills, the brand, our brand, Miltik, you know, it's expanding, it's getting bigger. So hopefully in, the, in due time, we'll be like a really good, um, you know, universal household name uh, just across the map. Uh, right now in L.A., you know, our brand, you know, we hold way. Everybody know who like we are, but we ready to take that more global type, you know, mm -hmm. feeling and vibe. So we can just be like around around the world. It's, get, it's getting there. It ain't never when you want it. You know what I'm saying? That, nothing never happens the pace you want it. If, if, if it was up to us, we have it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. But as long as we going up and we show growth in what we're doing, there's never a reason to stop. If you go, you know, you'll be a fool to stop while you're going up. You know what I'm saying? So that's real talk. Yeah. That's real talk. Yeah. I, hope I, was, and I was, I was about to ask you. That, uh, I, was, I was just gonna say quickly. That's a bar that I hope everybody, everybody catches. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you're, as long as you're growing, that like that's all that matters. That's it. it doesn't matter the pace. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. talk. Real talk. Please uh, listen, brother. It's, it's been an honor and a pleasure uh, having you on once again. It's open door policy. You already fam, so you already know what it is. But, um, pleasure. Look, yeah, man. Look, man. It's open door policy. So whenever you want to pull up, man, you just, you just all you got to do. You ain't even got to knock. You know what I mean? Just come through. You <laughs> feel me? Uh, and definitely looking forward to what's coming up next. I'm glad that you shared that with us. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a show or anything of that nature. You know what I mean? Uh, definitely looking forward to more music more content and all that good stuff uh please let the people know where they can find you before we get to that yeah one of my main problems when i was doing um music i was inconsistent that's one of my, my biggest problems if anybody out there, out there is listening stay consistent you know like i would really drop a record file like once every three years you know what i mean like like one i was talented enough to always make radio though like anytime I do come with a record, like nah, like you like this this shit go, I fuck with this, you know, and, and they play it, whatever. So this time around, I say, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna really drop at a rate for 2001 that it should be dropped at and not say, ah, you know, I'll I'll, I'll give you a record and then you won't hear from me for another two and a half years, and I just be doing whatever else across the map, you know, like <laughs> and then I come back, you know, I mean like, hey, I got another record, man. You know, I, I shot a video. Duh, duh, duh. So this time around, I said, we gotta stay, we gotta stay working. You know, because 
that's my personal biggest flaw. I think I, I found in my career was like, you know, I would just drop a record and then disappear and then come back, drop a record and then disappear. I always stayed in the scene doing music, you know, behind the scenes. I worked with, you know, other artists. I'd be doing management, you know, for other art. Like I stay musically, you know, in touch with everything. But as far as me personally, like artist wise, so while at Green, I would be hit and miss, you know, like consistently. He here today. He, he left us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like Maxwell, D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to reach me, go ahead. Follow all my uh, social media. You know, Wallet Green. Everything is spelled the original. Wallet like in your back pocket. The color green, and it's a uh, it's one word. Or you go to WalletGreen.com. Whatever you want to do. Uh, meal ticket. Follow our casting company if you want to get into music videos, anything like that. Commercials. Follow the brand. Meal ticket. Uh, on Instagram, you can follow Meal Ticket TV. And uh, like I said, we cast most of your favorite artist videos that y'all look at. They all go through our company. So say the Meal Ticket uh, handle one more time. Meal Ticket TV. So that's on uh, Instagram. And you also can um, get registered with us as, uh, as well. Meal Ticket Casting. If you haven't got registered with us, go to the site. Uh, get registered with Meal Ticket Casting that way. We'll have your information and we can place you in music videos if that's something that you want to get into. So ladies, if you're listening, if you want to be on TV or the next beautiful video vixen, get with Mill Ticket. We were we 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 had it popping right now. And that's so, Mill Ticket as in M I L. I'm about to be a video vixen. <laughs> yes. L L like million dollars. Yeah. Not a million. A million shout dollars. Out, shout out to my million man dollars. emails and wallet man because I, I can bounce with these brothers professional. You know what I'm saying? They they definitely aren't one of these like scamming type casting companies that be out here. Extremely official, extremely legit. And when he says like your favorite music video, guarantee if we name any top video that's out, they did the casting. Yeah, you know what I'm did, saying? And it's, it's, we did a uh, humble for yep. Kendrick, and that ended up winning video yep. that year. That's that was cast by the two. Yeah, right. award it's, winning it's, show. Man. That's a ball. award winning. Yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah, know when y'all need Real someone talk. who's not willing to put on too much makeup and uh, you need a boho ass. <laughs> Chill. I, I ain't making no face yeah. or nothing, but you know, let me know. <laughs> when, when you need, when you're casting a short artist, because I'm five foot nothing, look, I'll be right next to him, look, making him look tall too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. Thank y'all for having me. I love y'all, man. Uh, I had a good time. Thank you. It's all love, brother. Always, man. Comfort zone. So that, that's not too many people can do that. Y'all have you know talking some other topics. I like. Yeah, it. man. Well, you already know, man. It's it's a it's a family reunion around here. You already know. You know what I'm yeah. saying. So you the, you the broski. So it's it's automatic love, man. You know what I'm saying. And uh, as always, this is the Kickback Show at the Kickback Show on everything. All your social media devices. I go by the name of Faz. I am Wave Cap Johnny at Wave Cap Johnny on. Look me up, I'm everywhere. And she is. <laughs> Again, Tiana Giovanna across the board, everywhere, T-I-A-N-N-J-O-V-A-N-A. -A -A. And he is. DJ Swivel on Twitter, Swivel on Instagram, S-W-I-V-L-L. -L. Wallet Green, thank you, yeah. sir. We appreciate you, man. I'm mean, like this, man. What's up, man? It's your boy, Wallet Green. I'm rocking with the Kickback Show right now. My favorite station to be with, yeah. <laughs> There it That's is there. And there it is. Yeah. Party party. Yep. You already know. All right. My man. Peace, man. Go.